All right. Listen up, you primitive screwheads. You see this? This is my boomstick. It's a custom pump action spring thunder. GDOP's top of the line. Find it on his Etsy page. Run you about $180. It's got custom 3D printed pieces, custom laser cut aluminum pieces, and a hair trigger. You got that? Well, I, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but my, my nerfing dreams have been answered. Because I finally have what I've wanted for so very long. A pump action, shell ejecting, internal magazine, blaster. That'll shoot pretty much anything that you could fit inside of a shell. And it performs admirably well. Not crazy good, in fact, obviously the only thing that could ever be wrong with a blaster is that it could potentially hit a little bit harder, but for right now, for what I have here, I'm really, really happy. And this will probably be my primary for everything. Now is this something that will absolutely blow away every single other blaster on the field? Not even close. It is essentially a glorified toy. It's usable. It's serviceable, it does work. Does it serve a purpose? Yeah, maybe a couple. But it's not gonna immediately blow you away if you're looking for high-end performance and just absolute sheer balls to the wall, FPS limits, breaking, can't even think straight. Because I'm holding the Spring Thunder, produced by GDOP. I was actually the second person to get my hands on the hardware kit for this. So, what you see here was printed out and constructed by me. But the hardware kit was obviously made by GDOP. It would be potentially possible for you to make one yourself, but it does use at least his hardware kit, and this is probably going to go true for a lot of other ones, is that it requires laser cut pieces because this does take and eject shells. That's not a joke, it does. And something mechanically complex like that requires precision. And the entire blaster, not even buying the hardware kit itself, would run you about $180. And for many of you, I would almost recommend doing that. However, I have some warnings before we get too far into things. Because this was not an easy build. Valor got through it pretty much effortlessly. He's a very intelligent person. I'm not a clever man, and this was not an easy build for me. Things continuously went wrong. I broke many pieces. I lost some others. And it took a lot of willpower to power through this. However, once I got through that initial stage, I knew every single little thing about this blaster to where I can do anything I want with it. I can pull it apart effortlessly, service all the pieces, and put it back together. If you don't have a 3D printer, or you didn't build this yourself, you may run into some issues if you want to use this for anything more than a glorified toy. For instance, if you want more shells, like the ones beautifully strapped to my body, you would have to print them out or buy them from GDOP. Not actually a bad idea, but of course, if you have your own printer, you can just print out whatever you want. There's a wide variety of shells you can put in this thing. Single Elite, Double Elite, Triple Boom Co. You can also, of course, shoot six flechette rounds, half darts, four half darts, rival, cut down megas, and combinations of pretty much all of those. Whatever you could possibly want. This thing will basically do it. And it will do it one after another in whatever pattern you would possibly want. Which makes seeing this thing on the field and going up against it a gamble. What exactly does the person fielding the Spring Thunder have loaded into their blaster? Could be anything. Could be rival rounds. Could be Boomco. Could be a single lead. In what order? Again, who knows? And that's the strength of the Spring Thunder. To launch pretty much anything you want at any time, provided you have the shells. And yes, it will load the shell, fire the shell, 
and then eject the shell, and then load the next one. If that doesn't bring a smile to your face, stop watching this video and get off my channel. I don't want anything to do with you, because this is just pure awesome. And with this being a custom-designed 3D printed blaster, understanding how it works and being able to service it when things go wrong, because they inevitably will, is really important. Which is why you might be wanting to skip all the pain and heartbreak and simply just buy a complete one and not have to worry about it. Which is actually a good deal. However, again, when things go wrong, what are you going to do? So for those of you that have a 3D printer and want one of these things, I'm going to highly recommend that you use the hardware kit because things will go wrong and you're going to want to be prepared. Is this blaster worth buying? Completely. <laughs> I can't state that enough, but I should again reiterate the fact that this is not some crazy 200 to 250 FPS monstrosity. This is essentially a glorified toy. You're not going to be shotgunning people with three rival rounds at 150 feet, you'll probably get slightly better than Atlas ranges with three balls. Uh, the Boomco triple shot actually works the best I've seen. It's actually surprisingly good at using that. And it is capable of some amount of rapid fire because it is pump action. Cosmetics wise, this thing looks incredible. It looks rather basic, but it is built from the ground up to be expandable with all sorts of little things. You'll see I have this mix matched stock on the back of this. This is, of course, 3D printed wood that's been stained by myself. And I only had to use that because I ran out of pink and black. And up at the front, you can put all sorts of attachments. I don't have anything on there because I like to keep my blasters fairly compact. And without the stock on here, it is rather compact. But with the stock on there, it's significantly more comfortable. The Prime, once you get it tuned in, because at least for me, I had to spend a lot of hours just going through sanding and lubricating pretty much everything to get the Prime pretty smooth. I've cut it down to about a third of what it was when I first built this thing and got it working. And before, it actually hurt my arm after a while. My arm would hurt and I couldn't figure out why, and then I figured out it's because I've been using this thing all day. After I worked on it, it's much, much better. And it's the closest I've ever been to actually being a real gunsmith, because it essentially is the mechanics of an actual pump action shotgun. There's no debate. And the small amount of tuning that even this proper thing that was designed from the ground up to do what it does, it required a little bit of tuning from me because of my printer or whatever other issues that might have been to make it run exactly how I wanted it. And it was pretty difficult because my main issue was for whatever reason, maybe it was the filament I was using, but this thing is about an eighth of an inch shorter than it should have been, which caused the catch to not work, the shells not to eject properly and all sorts of problems that required a lot of tuning from me to get this thing even functional. But once I did, it was really fun. This is a really cool blaster. And if I were to run this in a war, which I will, of course, it's my new primary, you're going to be basically patient you're going to fire from cover, and you're going to be nothing but close range with some medium range harassment. And you're going to be able to clear out about four, maybe five people, because of course you can load four shells, prime it back, load another one in there and have five shells ready, and just destroy everyone. It's not 100% reliable yet, because I have issues with shells not ejecting. Hasn't really been an issue right now, but I have had that problem in the past, and most of my gripes have come from the shells. For instance, the actual sealing mechanism for the entire blaster is on the shell. There's an O-ring on every single shell that I have. That means I have to glue O-rings to all of these. And they do have a tendency to break. I've had it. a lot of problems with shells. I've printed out maybe over 130 at this point, and maybe an eighth of those are reliable and work. I mean, no two times have I ever printed out shells if they worked exactly the same. In fact, all of these I've had to sand down the rims because they were too big or they wouldn't catch in the extractor and all sorts of a variety of problems, which was uh, heart-wrenching. Which is why it took so long for me to get this video done, but I'm finally at a point where I'm happy with it to demonstrate it, show it off, and say yes, 
you want a blaster like this, this is your chance to get it. If you're wondering about the sight I have on here, it's actually one that was sent from NF Strike that I immediately put on here because it fit it perfectly and it works really well. I'll have a proper review on that, but I will have a link to it down in the description below because it is really, really good for such a cheap, like $22 optic. Like it could be used on a real gun, of course, but it's full metal and it works perfectly fine for this thing and it's easy to adjust and side in and all that stuff. And it completes the look. I don't know what else I would add to this. The only thing I could possibly want is shell carrier on the side, but that could get a little bulky. I personally like it like this. You can see all the paint I originally put down is worn in. I just painted the PVC with Rust-Oleum. Didn't really hold all that well. The 3D printed parts were disgusting. I had to sand them down and I'll probably completely reprint this thing in the future. But if you want to take it apart, all you have to do is undo four screws and the entire blaster comes off in sections. You could easily replace, change colors, or as the files are updated, completely change the 3D printed files. A hardware kit, a little bit of a different story. Bending springs and shoving them in there and pinning them together for things like the little follower stops and shell ejections and stuff like that was really, really painful. But I'm glad I did it because now I know exactly how everything's supposed to work. And I did manage to get it done. If I managed to get something like this done, any of you can. GDOP has outdone himself with building one of those complex blasters I've ever seen. And it wasn't built for crazy performance or anything like that. It's not even really worth using most of the time because of course you have to have the shell. And the only thing these shells let you do that a normal blaster will let you do is easily reload and follow up with a variety of different ammo types and shot configurations. Whether that's useful in a Nerf War where you only need one dart to usually tag someone out is debatable, but for some of you, this is what you've wanted, just like myself. And this is y'all all, and this is all you'll ever need. The Spring Thunder. The coolest blaster I've ever got my hands on, the coolest blaster I've ever built, and I've been just ecstatic to be a part of this entire process. I have to really much thank Valor and GDOP for helping me build this, because it was tough. And I'm sure many of you will have questions and comments about this thing. And if those two are too busy, go ahead and pop into the Fuzzy Walrus Discord channel. Ask some questions. Should be able to help you out. Valor's in there as well. He's not too busy. And I sure hope to see more of these things on the field because it is just an insanely cool blaster. And I shouldn't need to say anything else more about it. Pump action, internal magazine, shell ejecting, capable performance Nerf shotgun. I'm done. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for GDOP making my dreams a reality. You will see this many times in the future, but until then, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You gotta